All right. You have and I have lived and probably some of you outside Wellington are a bit peeved at me for being so Paris prumpy about the water woes of not just Wellington City but the entire Wellington region and the fact that after more than a year of inactivity, um, Wellington Water, which is the body charged with fixing water, is actually getting on with fixing, as I said, 14 to 16 month old leak in Manor Street, one of the kind of at the epicentre of urban Wellington. Um, they did send a note saying that was all going to be done by this morning. It's not. <laughs> it's not. But at least it's getting dealt to, and maybe it took the platform ringing uh, Wellington Water live on air to sort it. But that's only a very tiny part of a much wider problem for the entire Wellington region, which is currently under a Level 2 water restrictions. They're not having a garden. They don't and showering and frequently, they don't seem to affect me too much. There also seems to be a fair bit of tension and obviously finger pointing amongst disappointed residents and ratepayers over what has gone wrong with the Wellington region's uh, water supply and water infrastructure. Allegations in Wellington, I know that pleas to spend more on maintenance fell on deaf ears. The suggestion, I think, in Wellington City in particular, the suggestion abroad that we've had a green-dominated council more interested in building waterways, uh, building cycleways than waterways, maintaining waterways or doing the basics. And I would add a major earthquake event in the last 10 years in Wellington that had far greater impact on this region and its infrastructure than was nationally acknowledged I think a level of, of impact that should have respond, resulted in some funding from central government to fix things beneath the earth, but we never asked. Um, all this sort of came to a head when the new local government minister, Simeon Brown, appeared to call out two Wellington uh, councils, the Upper Hutt City Council and the Wellington City Council, for not responding to a request for information that he had made. Um, there were counterclaims to that and um, the Mayor of Upper Hutt, Wayne Guppy and Tori Farnow, who broke from her time at the gym, uh, they met earlier this week with Simeon Brown to talk about these issues. Um, Tori Farnow, as a Green-aligned politician, is part of this silly we-won't-talk-to-the-platform thing. But Wayne Guppy's not like that and he joins us uh, on the line now. Mayor Guppy, welcome to the platform. Nice to have you with us. Good morning. Good morning. It's probably a bit late for Happy New Year, but happy February. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> look, Wayne, we're in a bloody mess, aren't we? And it's not just Wellington, it's not just Manor Street, it's the whole the whole region, isn't it? Absolutely. And and, and it's gonna be made, it, it's gonna take everyone working together and it'll be central government plus the the uh, the, 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 the the councils in the Greater Wellington region. I mean, it's, it, it will be now working out what sort of structure we have in place uh, to to help fix the problem. Because there's, there's immediate issues, Sean, as you know, and there we need. This has got to be an ongoing issue for the next 10, 15 years as we replace the, the pipes across the region. All right. Um, what was the meeting with the minister like? Was you was the lack of information or his claim that you guys hadn't responded in time, was that a misunderstanding? What exactly happened there? We never were told. We, we were shown a letter. We got a letter back from uh, chair of the, um, chair, the, the chair of the board, uh, Campbell Barry, who said this is what's going to the minister. No one asked us or, or told us that they were just supplying any extra information whatsoever and uh, assumed that the letter that was going back answering his questions, that was it, went back and... Uh, Suddenly, within 24 hours of the letter going, uh, I got a letter from the minister late one Friday night saying, where's the info? I said, well, I didn't know we had to supply it. So we fixed that up. I took the information that he wanted, gave it to him and handed it to him when we... Uh, what was uh, the uh, information that he wanted? Oh, he just wanted to, to see what we were doing in the immediate term and what we were doing over the next 10 years and effectively, effectively seeing what measures we were doing and making sure we were taking the issue... Uh, of the of, of the water issue seriously, yeah. so we supplied all that info. Supplied now, it to Wayne, is it right to say that Wellington Water is basically a joint venture operation amongst all the, the councils in the region to deal with this issue? Yeah, I mean, we it's it's it, uh, shared ownership between Wellington City, Pyrrha, Upper Hutt, and uh, Lower Hutt Regional Council, and South Wairarapa. 
Uh, All right. The issue is, the issue is I have is that they can't deliver. Okay, so this is interesting. So you're saying the delivery mechanism for the solution, which is Wellington Water, is underperforming. Well, I mean, it's uh, I can, we have carryovers. We have, you know, they're asking for more money for from Upper yeah. Hutt, uh for renewals and for uh, capital projects. We've got over the last three to four years, we've got eighteen over eighteen million dollars unspent, and I'm asking for some assurance from them. If we give you more money, uh, another million dollars to be fixing or to replacing pipes, can you deliver? Because the history is that they haven't. Okay, so you're saying it's a problem with Wellington Water. It's not a problem with identifying the problems or resourcing. I think they've probably got resourcing issues. Uh, there's no question about that. But 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 the key to it all is that uh, we've ne- they've never told us that they that they don't have the resources to do it. But it certainly history shows that they struggle to deliver. All right. Well, the money's got to come from somewhere. What is the estimate? Of say in the next ten years, what needs to be spent to get Wellington Region's water infrastructure back to an acceptable level, where it's not oh, look, having forty-four to fifty percent wasted? Absolutely, across the region, it's tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars. There's no question about yeah. that. But it's a amount of having a plan and having a you know and working through. I mean, one of the things that we're doing in Upper Hutt, and I'm sure the other councils will be looking to do that, is we've we've it's been identified. Uh, that and that our, we have a, about four percent of our pipes are what they call in the worst state. Yeah. So we're rejigging where that where the money is and saying let's concentrate on those first. You're doing that, I take it, in conjunction with Wellington Water, who do the work. That's right. That's okay. right. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. Um, are you going to have to rate people more to pay for this? No question about that. There will be, and, and, and you can see that across the country. Because, look, a lot of this infrastructure issues, Sean, that, that, that's arisen. If you have a look across the country, they, the rate increases are going to be yeah. quite high right across the country. There's no question about that they, for, for paying that. Infrastructure. You know, some of the costs for councils over the last uh, 80 months to, to, have gone up hugely, not only with insurance costs, et cetera, and inflation. They've all added to the cost of getting a lot of this, these major works done. Yeah. Well, a couple of things I want to raise with you in relation to the Wellington region's problems. And as you said, hundreds of millions needed. Um, I am told, though, boy, I've had some conflicting reports and feedback on this. I see they're building a cycleway from Petoni to Wellington. They are. The, the that- cost of that is estimated to be $350 million plus, Wayne. You shake your head. So, and it just struck me, and I wish I could have got to you before you had the meeting, Simeon Brown's also the Minister of Transport. I was going to say, if we're going to prioritise central government spending, might it not be a good idea, though I'm sure the Lycra wearers will lose their stuff over it, to say, let's take the $300 or more that is going to Waka Kotei to build what will be one of the most hostile cycle lanes in the world or cycle paths in the world, why don't we reallocate those funds to Wellington Water to get their problems fixed incredibly quickly? Well, I think what you say, I agree, but I think you'll find that this government and uh, we'll closely look at long-term plans. All councils across the country are starting to develop, are well into developing their yeah. long-term plans for the next 10 years. And I'm sure that they will, and look, they'll all say they're not, but many of the councils will have nice to have things in those long-term plans. And I will, I expect that this government will... Do you think the people of, of the Wellington region will benefit more in the size of their rate bills, a reduction to their, or possible slowing of increases to their rates, and the livability of the Wellington region by having a cycle away from Petoni to Wellington at cost of $300 million or more, or more spending on fixing their water infrastructure? 